Hi everybody, hi YouTube family, how are you? Lisa A. Romano here, the Life Coach, and today I want to talk about codependency and sex, and oh my god, what a mess that can be. So, as you know, dear ones, if you've been following my channel and you've been reading my books and listening to my blog talk radio, you will have noticed by now that I don't mince words, I say it like it is, I tell my truth. And if my truth resonates with you, that's awesome. If it doesn't, click off. It's fine. I have no problems with that. I'm not your teacher, and that's cool. So I want to talk about what codependent women do when they are attracted to someone in the beginning of the relationship. Not all codependent women, but lots of them. Remember, codependent people are not connected to self. They are codependent on other people's approval. They have been abandoned as children emotionally and have no connection to self because mommy and daddy have not innately helped and allowed that child to feel connected to self. So if you don't have a mom and dad who are connecting to you on an authentic level, how are you doing, Lisa? How do you feel? Me, Lisa, me, I exist, I am. I can say I feel, I think, I want, and that's okay. And, and that's the way I'm supposed to live through my authentic self. If that is not your experience and you are being beaten and you're being ignored and no one gives a crap how your day is, there is no connection to the I am that I am. I am outer focused. I am, I am outer directed, meaning that I'm going to get my cues from the outside. I'm going to settle for who shows up in my relationship in, ter in terms of relating to other people. I'm going to settle for jobs that are most convenient and do not stress me because I'm afraid to push myself outside the comfort zone, fear criticism, and just don't think that I can do um, what it is I really want to do. And, and deeper, I don't think I have a right to want what I want and to do what I want. So I'm not even going to try. So now how does that parlay into relationships and sex? So my experience with working with clients and even some of my own early experiences was that I didn't realize that I was a codependent slash love addict. So when I first met a man or... Um, when women first generally meet a man, they're people seeking, people pleasing. So they're seeking to please. So men are attracted to women and women put on their best face and their best foot forward. And they, they always look good and they always smell good. And they're oftentimes very sexual in the beginning of a relationship. And that is because we're seeking that man's approval. And once we get that man's approval, and we're, he, we're in a relationship with him, we begin to shift. We understand that's when our, that's when our patterns begin to begin to show up. So now, um, if we don't feel worthy once we got him and, 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 and now he's ours, all our stuff is going to start to play out. So if we don't feel worthy, what will happen is we're angry about that. And, and instead of being this, this person who was so into him in the beginning of a relationship, we start to pull back. And here we go. He doesn't know who the hell he married. Because one day, you know, when you first met him, you were all over him. You love sex. And now, you know, two years into the marriage or three years into the marriage, you don't want to touch him. Because all of your stuff is beginning to play out because you don't feel worthy. So you originally, in the beginning of the relationship, were seeking his approval and found a way to manipulate how he saw you by being sexual. So now he's in. Now he's in. So... He felt seen, and lots of times codependent women attract narcissistic men because they need to feel seen. They need to be put first by you. They need to have power over you. So we have to be very, very careful about how we move forward today with this new information, this new, new knowledge. So let's say we're, we're not talking about a narcissistic man. Let's just say that we're a codependent female, for instance, and this... Uh, pertains to men too. Men do, men are very, what men do is they're very attentive in the beginning of a relationship. You know, they, they, they remember our birthday. They hold the door for us. They say nice things. They are complimentary. And the minute they have us, they begin to fade into the, into the, into the floor. Like, where did all that go? Like, how come you don't see me anymore? When I married my first husband, literally dear ones, when he put that ring on, he disappeared. He became someone else. It was frightening. I remember being at my reception, looking up at him going, who is, where did he go? Suddenly he wasn't looking me in the eye. He um, made no attempt to speak to me. He was suddenly looking away from me. 
like suddenly I he owned me and now I owed I I owed him because he married me it was terrible and it only got worse from there so lots of us struggle with intimacy because our relationship didn't start off on an authentic foot okay we're trying to get our needs met and so what we do is we both play games both sides of the sides of the relationship play games if you're in a relation, if you're heterosexual and you're a codependent male, what you do is you're all over that female, complimentary until you have her. If you're a codependent female, uh, the people pleasing codependent female needing to be seen, very often you look good, you smell good, you're thin, you're exercising, you're interesting, uh, and you love sex. Or at least he thinks so, and you're able to convince him that you do. You might hate sex. You might or you might be completely acting like you like to like sex and the physicality of a relationship and you might not really be able to stand it or you might be suffering inside but you're not telling the truth because you're not connected to the self you're not living through the authentic self you're still seeking this person's approval and then what will happen is eventually once you have that person you no longer need to seek their approval to because you have them you're in a marriage so now once you're in the marriage it's like it's almost like it becomes an arena and now haha I got you now all my programming is going to um, begin to surface now because I don't have to play games with you and very often times we become we take on the roles of our parents and so that's what I did I mean my mother was as codependent as they came and when I realized that I was unhappy in my marriage with my ex-husband that he was shutting down and that I was still seeking his approval we had kids we had kids and I thought, okay, you know, uh, the kids will make it better. I was so ignorant, but I have to forgive myself because I just didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. When you're unaware, you're unaware. You're unaware. And you don't know that you uh, have a right to say, wait a minute. This is not working out well. This isn't what I signed up for. I think I made a mistake. Nothing against you, but you became someone else when we got married. And I need to end this. And or if you are the person that enters into the relationship not being so truthful and you have discovered this about yourself that you weren't truthful, then it's up to you to say, I'm sorry. Sex cannot be healthy if the two people partaking in the sex are unhealthy. So let's say we have a codependent, people-pleasing female and a withdrawing male. So we have an avoidance and we have a pursuer. Lots of times it's the female that's pursuing the emotions in the relationship who very early on pretended to like sex or pretended to be into this guy and she wasn't now he pursues I mean he withdraws and that's their codependent dance or the codependent tango if you will and this goes on and goes on and goes on you know throughout a marriage and then finally the codependent female gets tired of chasing after the the emotions of the husband and, and oftentimes will seek extramarital affairs She's seeking the connection and she's, she's seeking the high of the infatuation phase of relationship where she's feeling seen and sought after by another man, but she's going to attract a narcissistic man who can smell her neediness like a shark smells water who is just looking to take advantage of her. And then she'll feel beaten and abused and taken advantage of and sometimes go running back to her husband and he'll take her because now he's got her and now he's got power over again and he's going to make her suffer the rest of her life for cheating on him. So this is what happens in codependent relationships. Sex cannot be authentic because it's not about genuinely loving the person that you're with and wanting to make bring them some physical pleasure in the context of a monogamous, um, satisfying, mutually satisfying relationship. Sex is about me convincing you that I'm good enough for you, which is manipulative, and I'm going to pretend that I like sex because I want you to feel pleased by me and help me feel seen. And then you're, you're giving yourself up. You are lying to yourself. Your body becomes a passenger in that experience, and it's just your programming that's taking over. And eventually that will become very, very old, and you will feel drained because you can't keep up that type of facade. You'll end up gaining weight. You'll end up drinking. You'll end up on antidepressants because you're not being honest. So the only way to really have healthy sex in a marriage is to confront the codependency between the two of you. Sometimes what will happen is you'll be very lucky and both people want to get healthy, but most of the time it's one person that wants to get healthy. 
I suggest coming clean to your partner and telling them that you need to work on yourself, maybe pulling back a little bit, maybe learning how to experiment with making your own, we won't get funky now here, dear one, but maybe, maybe experimenting with how to bring pleasure to your own body. And then, you know, once you have learned to make it real and like the, the physical experience is real and you've learned how to please yourself, then maybe you can bring that into, into a relationship. But then again, you know, to be able to be that, that authentic with someone means that you have to trust your partner. And most oftentimes in a codependent relationship, trust has been abused because people pleasing codependents tend to take advantage of passive aggressive, withdrawing, condescending, narcissistic type individuals. And so it's going to be very difficult to do that, but at least it's a step. Owning your, owning your half of what's wrong in the codependent sexual dynamic is a step forward. If nothing else, it's a step forward in your own awareness of self and learning to take responsibility for how perhaps you, in the beginning of the relationship, were over the top with sex as a way to hook this person into your experience because you needed to feel seen. And as a female, we're socialized in the society to know that we got power between our legs if and we can use it if we if we know how to and we can manipulate men onto our side of the things what do you think mistresses are doing hello we can learn a lot from them but but we can also learn what we have to learn is to be as authentic as possible in now and forevermore in the beginning of all our future relationships i hope this has inspired you and brought some clarity to this very complicated situation dear one namaste i bow to the love and light in you